All right, hello fellow coder, welcome back to this next lesson. Uh, in this one, we're gonna be diving into uh, essentially uh, some tweaks around our mock API and how we interact with it, uh, namely around uh, the parameters that we can uh, pass in uh, with the get request. So we're doing a get request, um, and with a get request, you can put a question mark in the URL, so you can say question mark, um, and then there's some, some um, you know, properties or attributes or whatever the word is, query parameters, I believe is the word, uh, that can be passed in um, to in order to interact with the API. Uh, now, I'm copying out on one particular one. So the first one is you can have uh, you can say what page of data that you want. So the, the data that's returned is paginated, right? So you can say page one of data, uh, and there is uh, per page uh, as a, um, a parameter, and the per page is how many uh, records will it send back per page of data, of paginated data. Now, uh, I don't wanna have to deal with paginating data and stuff, and so I'm saying, hey, let's put it to 1,000 per page. Um, I, with the way that we're using it, it's not gonna go above 1,000 per, per page of data, because we're not gonna be looking at days and days and days worth of data, we'll probably just be looking at one day worth of data backwards, you know, so 24, 24 hours in, uh, in the past. So um, I think that we can sort of hard code. Um, it's a cop out, but you know we don't really need to get into pagination. Uh, if we did get into pagination, um, if this were you know potentially more than um, <clears throat> uh, could, if it could potentially return more than one page, then we would have to look at the metadata, right? So in our match DTO, um, do we have the metadata? Are we reading it at all? Um, I, I don't. I don't recall. So in the uh, Oh, this one, response, yeah. So in here, in the course report API response, which has the match DTOs as a list, uh, there's also the, the metadata, right? So we would look at the pagination details and we have to say, hey, is there more than, or are there more than one pages um, being returned? Because if there's more than one page being returned, then you'll need to deal with that logic, right? You'll need to deal with it. Um, so then we would have to have another for loop. So here's our for loop here where we're iterating through the matches. Well, there would have to be a for loop above it where we dealt with, you know, whatever the, the, you know, for I into I equals zero, I is less than, you know, number, number of pages or whatever number of pages that we get, um, you know, I plus plus or something like that. So we'll have to iterate through page by page and this for loop would essentially wrap the entire match response, which is, I think, this guy. So we have to put that in here. Um, and then we'd have to iterate through the number of pages and we have to recall the endpoint. We'd have to call the mock API again, only we have to request page two. And then to, uh, page two, I guess it would be this, um, and less than or equal to. So uh, you start at page one, so this would call page one, and then um, it would increment I uh, here, and then I would be placed in here. So this would be I instead of just hard-coded, and so you'd have to just call it every single time, and this this line would be moved, uh, this line, I guess both of these lines would be moved, you know, into here or something like that. Um, and then we would replace this with, oops, with I like that. It would be something like this, right? Um, and the number, anyway, so this is not exactly it. Obviously, this is not correct code, but I just want to give you the, the idea of uh, sort of what we would do. Um, but as I said, I'm copying out and I don't want to do that. So let me undo that. <clears throat> and instead, what I want to do is look at the other two parameters, uh, which are the, uh, what is it? Uh, date start and date end. Date start, date end. Uh, so the starting and end date of our of our data that we're looking backwards to get. And I think, in my mind, a trailing sort of 24 hour period uh, should suffice. Um, should be good if we just look back 24 hours. We could even look back like probably one hour and, and it will be fine. Um, I'm just not sure how, like I say to see, I need to look at their, their API documentation to see how, um, what, what kind of data you can put in there. So let me pause it and look at the API docs for a second. Okay, there. So I just quickly looked at the API docs. Uh, they're sort of, it's from sort of my private API. It's not for, you know, the public to see. Um, and in it, it, it has a note that says, um, we recommend at least a two-day window uh, for um, the 
uh, window for the querying uh, for the parameters. Uh, so they say at least a 48 hour or two day window because it could take them up to 24 hours to approve a lead. So there's actually an approval process that's manually go that it manually goes through to approve these. So there you go. Let's not do an hour or six hours. We should do two days. Good to know. So uh, we'll we'll put that in as a two day window. So let's start that process. What does that look like? Um, so uh, these are going to be uh, parameters that we pass in here, and um, so we'll have to figure out you know what is today's date. So I guess we could say local date. Uh, we don't need time. So local date time would mean giving a time as well, but we don't need a time. We just are looking at dates. So local date. Um, Oops, what am I doing? Local date now equals local date dot now. Cool. So that says what is what is the date right now. Um, and then what we can do is we can say uh, let's do let's grab a date that was uh, two days ago. And now how do you do this? Now, yeah, adjust. I actually haven't done this in a while. Minus, right? You can do a minus, subtract amount temporal unit. Now, does that modify the existing? I forget if it modifies the, uh, come on, uh, minus returns a copy of this date with the specified amount subtracted. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't modify the existing date. Um, it returns a new one. Okay, cool. Which is what I want. I don't want to modify the existing one. So uh, amount to subtract will be two, and then the temporal unit, temporal unit dot, oh, how do you do this? I should have, probably should have Googled this. Let's look at the temporal unit, and how does this work? Um, such as days or hours. Uh, the most commonly used units are defined in chrono unit. Further units are okay. Standard set of period units. Implements temporal. Okay, it's an enum. Yeah, so chrono unit is the enum. So chrono unit dot days. There we go. Uh, I probably could have Googled it, but there you go. I figured it out all by myself. Look at me, mom. I am so smart. Okay, uh, let's say, I don't know, two days ago? What would you call this variable? Uh, I don't, you can call it then. Now and then. <laughs> That's a terrible name. Um... Yeah, let's say two days ago, because that's what it is. It's two days ago, if you don't, yeah. Uh, now, calls with the explicit whatever argument can be simplified. Oh, replace with minus days. Oh, look at that. Nice. Good job. Again, this this IDE, that's what I like about this IDE. It gives you suggestions like that. That's beautiful. So, minus two days, two days ago. Sweet. So, now what we can do is, in our request, we can say, and... Uh, what you call it? Uh, what is it? Date start equals. Oh, now, um, but we need to format it, right? Because we can't just give it now. Shoot. We need to give it a string version of now because um, we want it to be. Shoot. Okay, so we need a date formatter, right? Date formatter. Format, date, time, no, date, time, which one? We want the Java time format for dates. Uh, maybe it is just date, time formatter. Um, formatter equals date, time, oops, time formatter dot of pattern. And the pattern we want is year, 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 uh, month, month, day, day, which I believe that's the way we do it. So then we can say um, formatter dot format, oops, for matter, matter dot format now, and that should return something, right? That returns, um, yeah, okay, oops, man, this, I kind of want this to be now, uh, Because it's now as a string. No, you know what? We'll call this date start. There. And then date end. Because that is essentially what we're, what we're doing. Now and then two days ago. So we can format them both for date start, date end. Um, 
ideally I'd like to extract this code out, but anyway, it's not the prettiest way to do it. Um, okay, so then date start is here, and and date underscore end equals plus date end. Right? So that should be good. Now, when we go to the mock, what you call it? Mock API controller, what we can do here is we can accept query, query parameters. Now, oh, how do you do this with an endpoint? What's the proper way to accept these parameters? I think it's here, right? At query, no, request param? Yeah, request param. Okay, so request param, uh, what is it? Uh, page request param uh, per page. So page is a string, string. Now this one will have to say value, I think. Oh, it's the, by default, it's yeah, because it's per underscore page, right? And then, uh, what's the next one? Date start, so again, request param. This one is date underscore start, string date start. Request param date end is date end, okay? So this one we didn't need the uh, the the quotes double quote stuff because it's uh, it's just one word and that's fine. When it's two words and we have a variable name that's different than the um, the uh, query uh, request param name, uh, that's why we would need to have a difference here and specify it explicitly. Um, so that means okay, cool, we're we're bringing that in, and then let's just do a sys out to say hey, are are we getting this stuff properly, right? Um, you know, request params received are oh shoot how would I do this maybe we'll just say page three four per page start date and then end date and then we'll just say plus page plus per page plus start plus end there so now that we can just have a look and see, does this actually, are, are we bringing in the parameters properly just to make sure they're being sent and received, uh, sent properly and received properly? Um, Cause I don't know what dates we're gonna have. And then uh, and then we can actually start to integrate that into, well, we'll see. Uh, so this is, is today the ninth? Today's the ninth and then two days ago was the seventh. So that's perfect. Uh, looks good. Page one per page 1000. Um, I, I, and I don't know if we need to modify this to like match this stuff. I think that might be a bit overkill to like try to implement this logic and, and have it, you know, filter these guys, you know, I, I don't think we should do that. I think, uh, I think just, you know, being able to pass them in is enough, um, even though they don't do anything with the mock API. So cool. So that's the first main thing I wanted to do is make sure that we can filter appropriately and, and treat it um, appropriately with the, with the filters uh, in place, um, with the parameters in place rather. So that's great, happy with that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to think, what else do we need to do here? Uh, if we're not handling pagination, um, yeah, I'm not sure if there, is there anything else? Well, tell you what, I'll stop this video, and if there's another video, then there is something else, and I'm sure I'll tell you in that next video. If there is nothing else, then Congratulations, we made it through how to integrate uh, with an API endpoint and actually do something useful with it. So, uh, oh yes, there is something. I just thought of it. We need to extra or externalize a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff that's hard coded in here. For example, the uh, Slack stuff. Um, where is it? Uh, the Slack uh, Slack bot. Um, like this stuff we're hard coding, this should not be like this. This should be brought in as a, a, an environment variable. So that's what we'll do next is to tidy up the code, essentially is what we're gonna do. So I'll show you how to externalize this stuff into environment variables so that you don't have to check in sensitive data into like a GitHub repository and you can keep it private.